Right, we're back on the mobility scooter. I've got the new brake part that's come. Let's fit it and see if it works. Right, okay, those of you who saw part one of this video, uh, this was the break, the offending article, and I didn't know anything about this scooter, as you probably know. Those of you who did notice that that bleeping noise I had was the actual indicator which was left on. I didn't know where the controls was, I had it in the on position. But apparently, I was only gleaning information off of the internet where it said that uh, certain models of these scooters leave a, make an audible bleep. Uh, when there's a fault and then you can trace the fault uh, depending on what type of bleep it is but apparently that didn't uh, equate to this wheelchair that was the indicator left on but that's another story as well anyway this is the old brake now I did strip this down a lot of you said you can strip this down and clean it I tried that anyway I've tried it three or four times because I couldn't work out for the life of me why that this wasn't working because all this is a coil of uh, wire the resistance seems to be okay which was about 46 ohms when I measured the resistance on this the pins were nice and free and if I lever this open uh, it, it frees off that center spigot there which is what holds the brake on when it marries up with the shaft on the gearbox as you probably uh, uh, sorry on the, on the electric motor but when you apply 24 volts to it it didn't want to know it didn't really so anyway I spoke to an engineer from a company called bear with me where is it Nith Nithsdale wheelchairs I think they're up in Scotland and um, because I was going to get a second-hand one of these. There's plenty, plenty of second-hand ones of these on eBay, for example, for about £60. And I thought, well, for, for £60, you don't know what you're buying second-hand. A new one was £90 plus shipping, which was about £96. Uh, but again, not knowing the exact one to get, I thought it's best to speak to an expert. So I spoke to a wheelchair expert from that company I just mentioned. And uh, I told him what I'd done, that I've checked the resistance on it. I've, I've uh, taken it apart. He said, well, we don't normally take them apart. He says... When they normally go, that's it, they've gone. I said, well, I'm an engineer. I've been sort of, I, I, I was, it was only three screws. I said, I did take it apart and have a look inside. I said, I can't really see why it isn't working. He said, that's how they go. He said, all we do is literally just change them out. You can't repair them. If they go, that's it, full stop. Now, again, that didn't really sound true to me, but um, the proof is in the pudding. As you know, when I apply 12 volts, uh, 24 volts to this, let me show you. This is the old one, don't forget. This middle hexagon shape, is a plate call it a clutch plate if you want and when this energizes it frees that off and allows the motor which attaches to that hexagon head so to speak and that allows it to free will when you take the 24 volts off of that that de-energizes so to speak brings that brake on and you can't move that hexagon shape as you can see there so that wasn't moving full stop even after i'd stripped it down and cleaned it and uh, that, that that definitely doesn't work full stop you're not supposed to lubricate these anyway Anyway, this is the new one, and as you can probably see, the body is a lot larger. This is why I really wanted to speak to someone who knew what they was talking about. And uh, apparently, this is the new type. This is what you call the Mark II for the shop rider. It's for medium to heavy grade uh, electric chairs. And as I say, you can see it's physically a lot bigger than this one. So if I was choosing one off eBay, I definitely wouldn't have chosen this one. I would have gone for one for th that looked like this. These holes here do marry up with the original plates, as you can see. And all you need when you buy this, they give you longer screws because the screws for this one that bolt this on, as you can see, are literally just little short ones. They have to go through the whole body here. So the proof is in the pudding. This one, when you apply 24 volts to it, doesn't free off. And let's just check this one. Right, so here's our, where is it? Here's our lead. And this literally just plugs straight in to the connector like that. Shao, can you come here for a minute? Uh -huh. Shao's just coming over, I'll ask her to energise it. As you can see, the hexagon shape thing there is not moving. I can't move it at all. I've got the axle up in the air, as you know, and we're just going to pull the lead, pull the little stuff, turn the key on first. Let me just get this on the side and I'll come straight here. Turn the key on. That's it, now pull the, the lever. Yeah, you watch this. Go on. Yeah, did you see that free off? Look. And as you can see there, that is now flapping free, which allows the motor to spin. Let the handle go. And as you can see, after a second, it de energizes and it's gone back solid again. That is the electric brake. That's what was broken. We couldn't fix the other one. This is an upgrade one. This is for a Mark II. Let me just show you this. Hold on, stay there. Look at you go now, baby. 
Yeah, hold on. Um, hold on. Bison, go away. Bison, what are you doing? Go on, off you go. Everyone's coming up, look. Hello. Hello, everybody. Say hello to everybody, Harry. Hello. I forgot what I was doing, yeah? So all I've got to do is to reroute this cable where it belongs. No, no, no. Like that, and get the longer screws this time. And then just locate them in the correct holes. There we go. Shall can you pass me a fillet screwdriver, darling? Darling? Yes, darling. Just lo locate these. Thank you, darling. No, I need the short one, a little short, stubby black one, Sharon, in there. Now, there's a few holes going around here, so you just got to make sure you get the right ones. Yeah, I, I forgot, I, sh I should have had the little, there's a little one there. No, she said I wrote that bit, and I said that fits the description. Of what? Here you go, Gengi. Hold on, darling. And one thing you want to make sure of is when you come to fit this to your body there, make sure that that hexagon is seated right in the centre. If it's offline, you'll never get your screws in going around there. So just make sure that this hexagon's in the centre. Right, there we go. That's the uh, brake fitted again. I'm just going to tidy up these cables here. Right, that's it. That's the brake fitted. So now I should just be able to run it. Absolutely fine. Perfect. There we go. Job done. So yes, our diagnosis was correct, and with this model we needed an upgraded one. This is the one I actually got. As you can see, it was a Shot Rider Electric Brake Mark II. There's the product ID number there, and it cost me ninety pounds plus six pounds shipping, and that come from. This company here, Nitzdale Wheelchairs. I will say that I ordered this yesterday afternoon, about half past two in the afternoon, and it's come this morning, the very next day. So very good service there, I'm very pleased. The chap on the phone, as I said, he was very helpful, told me to go for the upgraded one. And that's exactly what we've done, we've cured the problem now. So I'm gonna drop this down, put the case back on, give it a little test ride, see you in a minute. There we go folks, hope you've enjoyed this little one, just a little conclusion to our little uh, mobility scooter. Hope it helps some people out because, uh, as I say, if you tested this, the thing and took it apart the way I did, you wouldn't physically see anything wrong with it darling, would you? No. But you happy with it? Mm-hmm. So we better go and deliver it now to Martin, shall we? Mm-hmm. See you later folks, bye for now. Mm.